Uh, I, I'm really honored to be here among so many talented athletes. Uh, I hope you know that you inspire me. And I'm also honored to be here among so many dedicated coaches and mentors, uh, supportive family members, and community advocates. Uh, I really like giving a speech like this because it gives me the opportunity to assess where I am in my life and in terms of my goals, in terms of my priorities. It gives me an opportunity to look back and see where I've come from and uh, hopefully a chance to share with some of you, well all of you, but for some of you this will be more important than others. I want to share with you some of the things that I wish someone had shared with me when I was in high school and when I was growing and, and beginning to dream and then do my dreams. If you have surfed, you may understand how challenging it is to ride a shortboard. So that's what I learned on. I, I continued surfing because of that freedom I felt. It was an amazing outlet for me from all the stress, as you can imagine, that I had at home um, caring for my mom. And the, the confidence that I gained in the water started spilling into all other aspects of my life. Those of you who are athletes in this room, you love the smell of leather of your shoes the smell of the court, the smell of the field, the smell of the chlorine, the smell of the salt. You know what I'm talking about. Nothing is going to stop you from going out there and doing what you love to do. And so nothing was going to stop me. And I continued surfing as much as possible. I, I'd have to get up at 5 a.m. if I wanted to surf before school because I'd take care of my mom first. And then I'd go surf before school and I'd surf after school and I'd stay up way too late doing homework, finally finishing it. And finally I was, I was on my way to finishing my, or actually living my dreams. I was going to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, majoring in chemistry. Uh, my first Thanksgiving break, I bought a plane ticket uh, to Hawaii and to the North Shore of Hawaii and really experienced Sunset Beach and Waimea and all the big waves for the first time ever. And I, I wasn't like I went out there and I was dominated. Let me tell you, I got pitched. <laughs> over and over and over again. I learned what it was like to get big wave neck where everything is just so sore and you're kind of like, hello, because you just whiplash over and over again. And, uh, you know, crazy salt water dripping out of my nose and I thought, this is great. I love this. I want to do more of this. And, I, it, you know, after Thanksgiving break, I came back with all my confidence boosted and um, I just wish I could tell you it was smooth sailing from then on. But um, unfortunately, uh, let's say first of all, uh, chemistry, calculus, and physics were kicking my you-know-what. <laughs> I was not doing very well. And uh, right when I, when I got back from, from surfing Hawaii, I was in Morro Bay, which is where I often surfed. And it was, it was big. It was one of those El Nino winters. And uh, no one was out. It was breaking out past the rock. And it, it was, it was kind of like that treacherous, like, do or die kind of situation. And, and so I thought, oh, that's great. I'm going to go surf that. So I did. I went out and I surfed and I got pitched on a wave and maybe it wasn't that big. Maybe it was 15 feet high, maybe, maybe more. But I fell from the top to the bottom, landed on water like concrete. And then the wave landed on top of me and I hit the sand on the bottom. And I just tore everything, my whole neck and back. And I just, I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't even do this because it hurt so much for so long. So I wasn't in the water anymore. I, I could walk, that's all I could do, for months. And then um, my mom's cancer, she had breast cancer, when, um, it returned with a vengeance. And it became apparent that she wasn't gonna make it for much longer. And I love my mom. Sorry. So I really wanted to give up. I didn't, didn't want to be part of this life any longer. And what could I do? I, I could have quit. I could have quit college. At least taken a break, right? And kind of gathered my wits and gone back. So, what what was it that propelled me through these these crazy challenges? And and first, I have to say that I believed in an incredible God, and I believed that the sun would shine again. I believed in my hopes for the future, and. Then this message may be for some of you right now who are who are in challenges. You now some of you may be at the top of your game, and some may just really be like, "How am I going to pull this off?" Well, my message for you is that these challenges aren't forever. Okay, they you will make it through. There will be sun on the other side. You will be stronger for it, and you'll be you'll look back someday and go, "Wow, I had no idea I could have been a place like this 
when I was at a place like that. So I wish someone had told me that, but somehow I knew that. And I had this internal drive, I had passion. And that passion came through playing and through being in a sport and being committed and dedicated to a sport. So through, through all that I have done in my life and looking back, it fits this theme of play, believe, achieve. It was through play that I found my passions and found confidence. I developed individuality. And it was that through playing that allowed me to believe and to take as fact that I could do my dreams. And open, I was open to possi it, the impossible possibilities. And that allowed me to achieve what I've accomplished so far. And it's, it's always funny for me to hear like, oh, wow, you've done so much in your life. And I look at it and I go, wow, I'm just a human being. I'm just this, like, totally normal person. And I just do some crazy things. That's all. <laughs> so I wanted to share with you what it is like to surf Mavericks and, and to go out there. Thrills you the ride that you have a love-hate relationship with. <laughs> and um, that's, that's like Mavericks, okay? You're at Magic Mountain and you just paid you know, your, your ticket, and you're at the point of no return. You're going. And hopefully you've got a friend who's going to drag you on that ride. You want to go on, but you really don't want to go on. So this, this incredible current that's like a river just starts flooding through the reef, and we have to jump in and then start paddling like crazy. And the paddle, depending on what the surf is like, is 20 to 45 minutes long. And the first time I went out, it was, it was big, and it was washing everywhere, and we had to make it through the gauntlet. So the gauntlet is this section where the Mavericks Reef is and Black Hand Reef is. And in between, there are waves that are this high that are breaking 50 yards one way, 50 yards in, 50 yards out. And so just on the way out, we're just getting slapped and hammered. My first day out there, I was, I was so worked by the time I actually got out to the lineup that I was just, I just sat in the channel and I watched and I was so amazed. I had a very dear friend, Jay Moriarty, who took my husband and I out there for the first time. And I saw these waves that were so big that you could drive a double-decker bus through without it getting wet. It was balmy and it was loud and it was ferocious. I was dropping in and a guy actually fell out of the sky and landed on top of me and we got tangled together and he lost his board and went in and I was able to, to stay out. But it's just, it's that, it's that close. It's, it's, and then of course in my mind, like, oh, beep, beep, I might not make this, oh, I gotta make it, I gotta make it. And then, oof, right, oh, I made it. So paddling, the swells are about 20 feet high, just these big kind of fat swells. And then the bottom drops out completely. And all of a sudden you're looking over a, a cornice, like, like, you know, you're sitting at the top of that ride, right? And then you get to the top, and then, you know, you go straight down. That's what it's like. That's exactly what it's like, dropping in. And then, but I'm, I don't have a little car that I'm strapped into, right? I'm like, I'm on my feet, and I'm, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. And then, you know, and it's just a slap, and then it's really cool. I mean, it's a in milliseconds, right? And then all of a sudden, wow, I'm riding, I'm dropping in. Wow, I'm still dropping in. Wow, I can't believe I'm still dropping in. It's just it's so it's so amazing. And then I can kind of look around and go, oh, hey, there's someone else on the way. Hey, oh, this is great, this is great. And then the cool thing about Mavericks that makes it just so, so outstanding and such an amazing wave, and one of the reasons I wanted to surf it is that it stands up, and then it's got a second section that walls up, and if you, you can stay down near the bottom and, and, and stay in the second section, the whole thing just throws again, and then it does it a third time. And so you can ride a, a wave that's a couple hundred yards out there that's huge, and it's just the most amazing experience. And, and then kicking out, it's like, yeah! It's kind of like that feeling when, when the roller coaster comes to a stop, and, you, and you, you feel that... And you can get out of the roller coaster now, and you stand, and you're kind of like legs are shaking a little bit. Like, yeah, I did it. I mean, that's that's really that's really what it's like to surf out there.